I'm with, on the left-hand side, Anthony, and I'm with Dustin on the right-hand side, and Dustin's wife, Vanessa. And this is a great blessing to be here with these dear folk because they called me not too long ago. I think it was Dustin who called me and said, hey, you know, I just want to let you know that we have found the faith of God our Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. We have been blessed with the truth about His Spirit, how God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son. And as they were interested in this information that they learned from this man named Anthony, who I have just learned is the troubler in Israel, they started studying and they started finding more interesting information from the Bible and the writings of Sister White. But then the challenge came from the local church that they are in. So do me the favor of, you know, giving us a little bit of background of who you are, where you are, no specifics that are unnecessary to share with the public, but, you know, just give us a general information. So if you don't mind sharing, Dustin, we'll start with you since you're the one that uh, actually talked with me first. Um, yeah, so my name's uh, Dustin Dahlia. I um, live in Arkansas, elder at uh, our local church in, uh, in Fayetteville. Um, uh, been married to my wife 17 years. She's, uh, I don't know, generational Adventist and, and, and brought, uh, brought me to God, to be honest. Um, you know, it's just a really good um, example um, as a Christian and uh, as a wife. And um, so pretty, pretty blessed uh, to be paired up with her. Um, Amen. Like I said, all kind of got started with, uh, with the conversation Anthony and Vanessa had. Um, a few months back, I think this past January, I think it was, uh, would be, what, seven, eight months now. And we're in 2020. Um, we had, okay. Yeah, 2020. And we had heard rumors that Anthony was taken off the preaching schedule, but we didn't have any details. Um, all we heard was, like, he was into something that wasn't quite right, and for some reason the pastor took on his schedule. Okay. And we had went from the went away from the church for a couple of weeks for your couple kids got sick and then we went out of town so we came back and then um vanessa and and, and then they got into a conversation about it and, and vanessa was trying to get out of him like hey what's going on like tell us what happened so finally he, he caved and he started um you know i'd say softly um trying to give us some points of what he found in the bible and really just gave us some thought-provoking questions and so I kind of, kind of came in there in the middle of the conversation and another elder, things got kind of a little sideways because there was some, you know, you know how this study can get, um, yeah. people get a little bit of sensitive and, and really hurt by it for some reason. Um, so we ended that and we just told Anthony, you know what, we're, we're going to take a look at it. Um, and, and, and we did. Um, and we found some, some pretty amazing stuff. I mean, as you know, just different than what we had known before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. um, and I guess again, I'll let Anthony give the details of kind of his law, because um, it really all started with him and and um, a study that he was doing. Well, good for you, Anthony. You're the troubler in Israel. I'm going to coin you as that, because uh, you started asking some questions. It sounds like Dustin heard some questions. Do you recall what some of those questions were in your mind, but then also what you started relaying to him or perhaps his wife Vanessa? Yeah. So I was actually going through. Uh, a series at, at our local church where I'm also an elder at and uh, I got to a point in the series where you know I was going through the controversy from from heaven to earth to the second coming and I got to a point to in in the controversy to where I was seeing some things that was was very eye-opening um, one of the the main things was the the jealousy of Lucifer. Why exactly Lucifer was jealous? And um, <clears throat> as I explored the relationship between um, the family of heaven and the family on earth, I was see seeing some striking similarities. Yes. Uh, when the Bible says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Uh, what I expected to come forth was a family in the image of God or whatever God was supposed to look like sure. or be like. And what came forth from the hand of God was very different from what the church teaches. Yes, sir. So 
yeah, I, I began to, you know, just investigate a little bit more. And of course, I didn't have all of the information. So I went to the Spirit of Prophecy in um, the book Story of Redemption to begin my search. Um, just real quick, the very first sentence of that book is a great challenge to the uh, ideology of the Trinity, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so I went between uh, Adventist Home and the Story of Redemption, which the Story of Redemption, as we know, talks about the family of heaven before the incarnation, and Adventist Home talks about the family on earth. Mm -hmm. And I was comparing the things that was said regarding the two families, the one in heaven and the one on earth. And um, I believe it's uh, Adventist home, uh, page 17, where she says we should relate to each other as members of the family of God. Yes. And you know, that, that sentence struck me really hard as I was praying and asking God to unite my family better in him and uh, to draw me near and closer to him in my walk and the Holy Spirit just began to work and open up things in the scriptures that I had never really looked in depth into mm -hmm. until now because you know I myself did not grow up in the Adventist church but when I found truth it was more or less hey this church is the truth I don't see how it could go wrong Yes. Right. Okay. Un until until you see the history of the church in in past time, and of course read the book of Revelation regarding the church in our time. Mm -hmm. So it it all just came flooding in from the Holy Spirit, and that's when I took the information that I had to uh, my pastor. No, you're you're a member of the Fayville Church, like. Dustin and his wife, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you both are working with the same pastor. How long ago was this that you brought it up to your pastor? I believe it was the beginning of the year also. As soon as I found it, I, I brought it straight to him. So you started studying in 2019, let's say that, is, is that fair? Yes, okay. yes. So now, <clears throat> did you feel like you were pretty settled in this truth, or was it still fairly new to you when you brought it to your pastor? When I brought it to the pastor, it was still fairly new to me. I didn't know what exactly I was seeing because I had two ideas warring against each other in my head. On one side, I had the Trinity. Then on the other side, I had the one true God. So what I was looking for is an explanation, uh, a sit down, so to speak, a study that would bring us to a conclusion on what's true, whether it be on this side or that. And, and we could expect that you would expect to receive that conversation, that Bible study, that several meetings perchance by a local pastor to be able to work with you, show you from the Bible exactly what the Bible is teaching, and you should be able to come away saying, wow, you're right, I hadn't known that from the Bible. But, but what did happen? Do you, can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so what did happen was, as I expressed it to... Um, the the pastor and i told him hey i was i'm i'm doing a series and you know the next uh, message in my series has a lot to do with the family of god mm. and i i need this settled in my mind um it was you know a less than perfect conversation that we had i would say and you know i i walked away feeling very unsettled in the matter. And um, if, if I could say, I, I was very disturbed, even more disturbed. And the spirit kept pricking at my heart to, to work on studying this through myself and to keep bringing it uh, before the pastor until I get a resolution. Well, I proceeded to do that. And because of my persistence, um, I was, I was told that I basically need to quiet down and uh, not be so adventurous and yeah. just wait till, you know, there's time for, for the study to proceed. Huh. And uh, needless to say, that did not, did not happen yeah. as, as I would have expected it to happen. 
So are you saying the pastor really didn't give you the time that you were hoping? Like you said, it was, you, you came away a little discouraged from the time that you did have a conversation with your pastor, but did that continue on? Was he able to work with you or did he kind of just push you away and finally tell, tell you to silence? No, actually, um, the, the pastor of our church actually has had three other churches at the time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, in my mind, see a time when it would be uh, advantageous for us to sit down and, you know, have that meeting. Mm -hmm. So it was in my best interest to try to press for a time where we could. Um, and I know that if I didn't, it wouldn't happen. So that's basically what I tried to do. I tried to continue to bring it before him uh, in, a, in a way that's not as much pressing, but saying, I need some resolution because sure. me, I don't want to be wrong before God as and the people, especially if I'm the one bringing the message. Amen. And that's respected. You know, there was a time where I was actually working with uh, Stephen Bohr at Secrets Unsealed, and I started learning about the Father and the Son and was really excited. I was told that I needed to be quiet and uh, to slow down my sharing with others, and my immediate response was, I'm listening to the voice of a higher authority. I verbally said that, and uh, I, I am glad that I had that conviction, and I would probably say the same, in fact, more, more assuredly say the same thing today. Do you feel like you're having that same experience? Absolutely. I, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was being led by God. Yeah. I, I knew that being silent wasn't in my nature from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So even more so now, even more so now that, you know, I felt the impression of the Holy Spirit to move forward and to say something, as uh, Dustin had said previously, you know, it didn't take much convincing for, uh, from his wife to, to get me to speak because I really wanted to. Um, and after I did speak, I, I just couldn't be quiet about it. Amen. And I'm still in that position now where I want to you know, tell more people about it. However, in the church, I wasn't able to. No, I totally understand. In fact, when I was um, able to leave the church per se, um, not in regard to membership, because that came a year later, they actually disfellowshipped me after a year. But when I decided in my mind that I'm listening to God and his word is directed me differently than the Trinitarian teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I felt such freedom and I saw the doors open in such a way that I ha I'm still reeling from all of what God has done in the past two plus years. Now, so you had said that Vanessa was the one that was encouraging you to speak. But Vanessa, would you mind sharing a little bit of what your experience has been in, during that time and maybe some of what your convictions were? Um. So I was surprised by the fact that um, Anthony was not supposed to preach because everything we always heard was right from the Bible and was very encouraging and was always, yeah, was to, so I was very surprised to hear that. So I knew that if Anthony found something that's something very interesting, like I knew that, I don't know, I was just like, I can't imagine he found something wrong. I don't know. I was just surprised that he would not be allowed to speak. So I was like, there's no way. <laughs> so I need to know what's going on. Okay. And then when um when I first heard about it, I was it was I was a little shocked. So I was like, huh, all right. Interesting. But I did always stumble over Patrick's and Prophets, the first chapter were Jesus meets with the Father, and um, well, there's no Holy Spirit in the meeting. And I was like, <laughs> always stumbled over that part. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. Where is he? Why is he not invited? Uh, because he's supposed to be God. So I was always, I could never explain to kids why, because we have talked about it. So I was like, hmm, weird. And then I also always had stumbled over Proverbs, actually eight, 
Mm -hmm. um, so 22 starting on. And I always like said to my mom, that sounds like Jesus is talking. But she's like, no, no, look here. That's wisdom. And I'm like, so weird. I have even had my Bible, like, Jesus, question mark, but nobody okay. explains. So I was like, so weird. And, <laughs> and also in Hebrews 1, I could, I was always so hurt by the fact that my, my dad is a pastor. And okay. I'm from Germany originally. So yeah. um, we had Bible studies, and in Hebrews one, that Jesus did all these things that he he does everything, but does not. I don't know. I could not understand the relationship from the Father. It seemed like he was very passive, mm -hmm. and Jesus and made lower. I just was very hurt by that fact. And then the explanation with through my son, it was always about the second death, and I could not wrap my mind around it. Every time my dad tried to explain it, I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> so, okay. so I was like, that does not make sense. So all these things just added up. So I was like, I had to sit with it a little bit and like read on white and actually came across your um, message about um, the Ellen White quote in Desire of Ages, the unborn, the, the sermon you have about in, from Kenya was, I think, where you said, oh, um, the, okay. yes, so that, because I had told my mom about, hmm, there's something going on in church, and she sent me a message from another pastor about Proverbs. And we're like, all right, sounds kind of okay, we sent it to him. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> so, and so she, she, she had sent me that, and then I had come up, and that was the quote, actually, that she sent me. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. And I listened to yours, and I studied more online, and the Bible, and I was like, yeah, there's just, it's just so clear, because I have all these question marks I had before. Yeah. So it was just a very, uh, I don't know, for me it was very easy. And very free because I could understand the love and the relationship to the father that was always so passive and it is so sad in a way because we have not understood him the right way so Amen. it's so it's so yeah it was such a blessing I all I can see you so say so it was very freeing and a blessing and it was just oh it's most wonderful I'm just happy <laughs> Wow, that's really encouraging. So now, when you started listening to, um, or rather reading the first chapter of Patriarchs and Prophets, it sounds to me, just from your words, that you were a tritheist. That means you were looking for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all working together, right? Okay. That's how I've been taught that there are three separate people or beings that are one God. My dad always explained to being three candles and there's like one wick. <laughs> okay. So sure. that's how I've been that explained, but it did not make sense or it was just weird. Why would the Holy God, God the Holy Spirit be left out of a meeting like that, right? <laughs> yeah. like, I, totally I don't understand. <laughs> No, I understand your, your concerns and questions about that situation. So, you know, I mean, I've, I've been able to interact with a lot of Seventh-day Adventist people in my previous pastoral experience and even now, um, just that's how it's working. But I found that most of the Seventh-day Adventist people are, like you said, tritheist. They're not really Trinitarian. Neither are the fundamental doctrines, numbers two through five. They're very much tritheist, but there's a mixture of Trinitarianism in there. So yeah, I, you were freed from this. It, it it was something you were able to accept because of your previous study. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Good. Now, so you were probably interacting with your husband, another elder in the uh, Fay Fayville Church, and what what is your husband saying during this time? I mean, was this something, Dustin, that you were picking up quickly, or what was going on? I'm I'm more skeptical when these kind of these kinds of things and anything. I just but I told Anthony I was like, okay, the the questions he gave us when we were in the cradle roll room of the church, the questions he gave us like immediately I kind of just ran through the Bible verses and I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> right? Because I know it because the questions he's answer, he's asking like I can't answer. Huh. And so I just told him like we'll we'll go we'll go and take a look at it. Um, the two questions that really stuck out to me were, um, does Jesus know everything, okay. right? And is there a hierarchy, mm -hmm. right? 
Trinitarian belief or our, our fundamental beliefs as Seventh-day Adventists says that there is no hierarchy yeah. and that Jesus is omnipresent, omniscient, right? All of that, omnipotent, all of that. Yeah. So in theory, he knows everything, but yet he doesn't know the hour in which he is supposed to go, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and there's some other Bible verses that say that. Oh, I've done quite a bit of study on that. I, I actually have a whole collection of stuff that I've presented before, but I got in a lot of trouble for that. So, <laughs> And so Vanessa and I started on our Bible studies actually independent. Um, I started with the Holy Spirit, and I just set out to, to just look at every single Bible verse that the Bible has on the Spirit or anything close to that. And I started out with things that are very obvious. And I just would copy them out of uh, out of the Bible, out of our app, which is the Accordance, which we we learned uh, because Vanessa sent you a question. It was really awesome. Oh, is that what it was? Good. <laughs> okay. I really like that app. You know, none of them are perfect, but it's a good one to use. It's a really good one. For and, and for it being free, like you, it's a pretty powerful free tool. So it is. Yeah. So I was just copying and pasting in one Word document every single one, and I think I got to over two hundred and something before stop and the big thing that jumped out to me is that the holy spirit is always talked about in a possessive form or most of the time especially in the old testament mm -hmm. it's god's spirit it's the father's spirit it's thy spirit his spirit it's so it, in the old testament it's there's rarely a time where it's holy spirit individual person yeah. that really doesn't show up until the new testament and even then it's really soft I was trying to find somewhere in the Bible where it's like, okay, Holy Spirit person being looks like this, but I just <laughs> couldn't find it. I kept looking and could not find it. You do find like oil and light and water and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, but never a face, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And for me, it was pretty clear, like the Holy Spirit, it's, it's God's Spirit. At that, in my mind, at that time, I had not looked at the, the relationship between the Father and the Son. I had not looked really at the angels yet. At that time, I'm like, okay, it's the Father's Spirit, and also somehow it's Christ's Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I made a little presentation for uh, another sister in our church because she had asked about how our studies were going. And at the end of that, I had a little diagram because typical Trinitarian belief, they have a triangle or the three circles. Yeah. But what I found in the Bible, it was really just the Father and the Son with just a little line, and that line is the Holy Spirit. And for okay. me, that's how the Bible read, just without anything else. I didn't even look in the spirit of prophecy at this point. I'm just looking in the Bible. And then I'm like, okay, there's definitely something here. And so Vanessa and I got together, and then this, I think this is the point where we started texting Anthony, I'm like, okay, well, you definitely have something here. Yeah. And so we started looking next into the history of the Trinitarian beliefs in our church. Mm -hmm. And how the first set of the first couple sets of, of fundamental beliefs barely mentioned the Holy Spirit, and it was only mentioned as God's representative in His omnipresence, or the, or the way God is omnipresent. Yeah, amen. And so, and then we found in 1931, just out of the blue, it starts with the Trinitarian belief. And Anthony actually brought this the, up the other day. The common argument against you know, against or for the Trinitarian belief in our churches, hey, they had found something that they previously didn't know, which yeah. I can accept. Like, we don't know everything, and there's more light going to be revealed. Mm -hmm. But if that were so, wouldn't there have been some sort of, like, big revealing document or book or some sort of movement saying, hey, we found this new light, here's what we found, and here's why. But we never see that. It just comes out of nowhere. And, you know, I, I appreciate your thoughts there. It is very logical the way you're saying that. Now, there are many people, the, pre, the president of the conference that I'm at, other presidents that I've spoken with, pastors, evangelists, people all over the place, but certainly on Facebook, they'll say that Ellen White used to be a, a one true God believer, but then became a Trinitarian, especially after uh, 1898 with the publishing of The Desire of Ages. But my question for that would be, where is, like you said, where is that document? Where is that statement? Where is the letter of explanation to the church? Like, I was wrong as a prophet, but God has revealed more to me. It doesn't exist. So it's really a, a very, as you said, weak statement or idea. Absolutely. Yeah. At least the same as the Sunday 
Jesus never, I mean, if Jesus never came out and said, hey, let's let's worship on Sunday, that would yeah. have been the same thing. Like yeah. the same, right? Yeah. And really, yeah, that's kind of like my Bible study that I did personally was, hey, I'm going to look at this the same way that I looked at the Sabbath years ago, right? Mm -hmm. hey, let me just see what the Bible says, take away what the world is saying, and just, hey, what what is what is sola scriptura telling me, right? And it told me that the Holy Spirit is God's spirit. Yeah. And then we kept looking and looking, and then them two kind of were quick on the how the angels come into play as ministering spirits and how they truly are the omnipresence of God's spirit. And we started looking at the relationship between the father and the son, which to me it is so clear in the word of God. It's, it's amazing that I never saw it. It, it is amazing. <laughs> it is. It is. And I sat down with Vanessa's dad when I first was getting interested in reading the Bible and getting interested in God and spiritual things. Uh, how long ago was that? That was probably, I started reading the Bible for the first time, 2009. Okay. And then it took a couple of years. I was, I was in the army then and I was deployed. And so it took me a couple, a couple of years to kind of like just wrap my mind around it, but fully, fully invested, ready to go, what, 2014, 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Okay. So, um, at that point, I remember asking her dad, like, hey, um, um, about Jesus, about um, his different roles, his different uh, names, um, and how he kind of explained it to me is that, you know, there's Jesus, the man, and then there's Jesus as God, and somehow they're different. Okay. And I was kind of like with Vanessa on the Trinity thing, like, okay, like, fine like there's just some things you're just not going to know and it's fine yeah um but looking back on that now i don't see any support whatsoever and mm -hmm. i don't see any support for that from from the adventist church either yeah no i just I, I, i've been searching for an explanation of hey how jesus the man and jesus as, as god are different other than just his his body other than yeah. that i don't i don't see how there's a difference mm -hmm. And so the beginning of this conversation was that you all were, through Anthony, being able to study with the pastor. And that's when you called me. You said, hey, what's going on here? I've been trying to interact with my pastor, and he doesn't seem to want to listen. And maybe there's more to that story. Do you have some more to share after you started speaking with the pastor and interacting? I mean, maybe you can get onto that point and uh, give us a little bit of information. I don't know which one of you want to speak first about it. Yeah, so um, the, first, the first time I actually had a meeting with the pastor, uh, we sat down. It was uh, myself, him, and the head elder. And the, the meeting started off, you know, very, very cordial, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> I asked one question that derailed, <laughs> derailed everything. And... The question was this, could we be wrong? Mm. And <clears throat> I didn't get an answer to that one. And okay. I said, okay, so here's what I'm asking. Could there be error in what we believe? Mm. Could there be error in specifically the 28 fundamental beliefs? Yeah. And that'll make a brother nervous in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <clears throat> so I I followed up by by asking another question, uh, not because I believed our prophet to be wrong, but I wanted to see what the answer to my question would be. Okay. I asked this question: Is there a possibility that Ellen White could be wrong about something? Hmm. And I didn't get an answer to that, but the answer that I was looking for was only God is infallible, <laughs> okay. right? So <clears throat> I, I wanted us to, to step away from receiving information from other sources into studying the word of God foremost for ourselves, mm -hmm. and then moving to the spirit of prophecy where we see 
any kind of shadow that doesn't illuminate, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're not getting the the light that we need from the or from the scriptures, or if we're not seeing it clear enough from the scriptures, then we move on to the prophets, the pioneers, to see what they have to say about about the subject. However, in the book Councils to Writers and Editors, uh, Ellen White says herself, we should not take the stance that all of their expositions upon scriptures are without error. That's right. That each one of us need to study for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is exactly what I was trying to get us to the point of realizing. Not that, you know, saying, oh, the prophet's wrong, but hey, let's come together and study the word of God Amen. ourselves to find ourselves right before God. Mm -hmm. Right? And it, it just went, went haywire from there because it was perceived that I was saying that the prophet was wrong and that we don't need to listen to the prophets. And, you know, I, I didn't get much opportunity to speak. It was more of this is what the church believes. And if we're out of accordance with that belief, then we're not truly with the church. Yeah. That's one of their strongest arguments. I, in fact, the first time I was with the Central California Conference pastor in one of two meetings, there were two, but the first time he was holding up the church manual and not the Bible and was saying, you know, in the, in the church manual it says, and there was a lot of people that noticed that, but we had another meeting two weeks later and we were all hoping that perhaps there would be a Bible instead of a church manual, but no, just as it had been, he was holding up the church manual and making it very clear that this is what God has said because they met together as a general conference, and of course that's the voice of God. But it hasn't been for many years because they don't even serve the God of the Bible, so I, I fully get that uh, where you're coming from, you want to know from God's Word, not from something outside of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, and then my, my early discussions with the pastor were different because mm -hmm. um, I had to I talked to him about this and say hey I'm gonna look at this and see what happens you know to see what we find and our concerns were the same mm -hmm. like I'm afraid that you know is this gonna diminish Jesus in any way right yeah um, and we, we both had those concerns and I didn't talk to him for a while um, and then we kind of linked up again and I had and through this God has taught me many things and he brought us closer together as a family, cross mm -hmm. closer to him. And one of the big things that I was convicted on, and, and Anthony, he said, same conviction is, hey, as an elder in the church, you need to do better, yeah. right? You've not been doing what you're supposed to be doing. You need to do better. And so I called the pastor, and there was a bunch of unsaid things between us, um, just a bunch of stuff that's gone on before. And I called him, and I just hey, aired all my concerns and and thoughts and everything and I just so I told him hey I want to be more active in the church you know I want to help get things and you know without getting too specific just want to help get things right in the church sure um, and he was on board and you know we had talked about having a Bible study with Anthony and with the other elders to really get to the bottom of this hmm. and so at that point we were fine um, I think later that week uh, I received a text from the head elder um, asking if I want to preach um, on a certain date. But I know Anthony has been waiting to preach. Um, okay. And there was, a, an, a, as far as I knew, there was an agreement between him and the pastor, as long as he doesn't preach on this subject, we're fine. Okay. So we called, we called an elders meeting, or Anthony called an elders meeting, not to really talk about, you know, the Trinity or anything, really just, just to talk about, you know, what's going on in the church, what we need to be doing better as elders, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I, and when we were in that meeting, as soon as I spoke up in defense of Anthony, there was a, a switch flipped. Wow. And then the pastor, he walked his briefcase and he pulled out this packet of mostly Ellen White quotes about, you know, third person of the Godhead and those types of things. Yeah. And from there, the conversations were absolutely terrible. Yeah. Um, oh, very no. negative. It was... Not a Bible study. It was more, I like to say, a trial and and lectures, mm. um, and um, things kind of went sour from there. It was pretty clear to us at that point that we need to needed to make all of our communication through email and text. So it would be recorded. 
Yeah, exactly. And I think the pastor kind of realized that, um, and then through emails and text, his communication was a lot better. So I think that was probably the right call at that point, just to kind of keep tempers down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, then um, uh, I wrote an email to an email and a text to the church board, basically letting them know that, hey, the pastor's recommending censure, because when you're taking a, a, an elder off the pulpit for these types of reasons, it's censure. Yeah. and that it needs to be brought before the board and the board needs to recommend it to go to a business meeting or not just like as the manual says yeah um so we had a we had a a board meeting i think a week i think a week after that and um it also did not go well mm. um definitely was not spirit you know was not christ-led um there was a lot of a lot of tension a lot of anger um, kind of a lot of snipping back and forth comments, um, but the, the, the board um, just barely did vote to, to recommend censure to the church business meeting. Went oh, wow. to the business meeting, it was split even. Um, again, same kind of attitude, very, um, very abrasive, a lot of anger. Um, mm-hmm. You can tell people in their seats were, were pretty hot, like outwardly very angry. Um, which to us was just um, very surprising, mm-hmm. right? Because if this, if we were talking about any other point in our fundamental beliefs, I don't think you would have gotten this type of reaction. Yeah. So for us, it was very clear, you know, what kind of spirit was being rustled up amongst the congregation. It was, it was pretty clear okay. um, and, and disturbing. Yeah. Um, so they, it, it, will, it was a 50-50 split. And both meetings. And in both meetings. And then the pastor, um, he said, well, in such matters, he has um, also a vote. And then he voted for censure. Um, at that time. So he was the tipping vote? Wow, okay. He was. He was the tipping vote. And at that point, he had told, because um, we had asked him, like, hey, you know, we're just wanting a Bible study, nothing more. <laughs> and then he recommended people, like, hey, you shouldn't do a Bible study with people that are demon possessed um, and recommended. Yeah. They said that about, he said that about you. Yeah. Both of us. Yeah, oh, demon wow. Possessed. Yep. Wow. So we're told that one of the things that we can know is uh, blasphemy against the Holy spirit is when you're equating the work of God with Satan. That's pretty serious business. So that's in the fifth volume of the testimonies. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a pretty big shock. We didn't, I, in, in my wildest thoughts, I never imagined it would, it would take that kind of turn. I just, yeah. you know, because that's your family, that's your friends, you know, and Anthony and, and the pastor are very, very close. I mean, like family. Wow. So we never imagined it would take that kind of turn. So what is it like? I mean, just to, I guess this is only a couple of weeks back, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so, yeah, about, about a month ago with the business meeting. Mm-hmm. So these are very fresh memories, very fresh feelings. What is it like to be part of a people who claim to be the people of the book, the people that have the red books, although they're not red anymore, they're black because they're not red anymore. But you know what I'm saying. They're the, the people of the book have turned against many, many, many people in the world because they study the Bible. How does that make you feel? I mean, are you, are you safe there? Do you feel like you're welcome? I mean, what's, what's your response? Well, uh, we, we, we knew immediately that we, we weren't going to be welcome anymore uh, because of an email that we received telling us basically we weren't going to be welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the feeling is is almost akin to betrayal if if i could express it as that yeah. it's you know i i said this to my wife when we were speaking i said you know we left our worldly family hmm. which you know was completely horrible for us yeah. and we joined this new family which was supposed to be much better than the family in the world Mm-hmm. And this family here that we were casting all of our, our, our hopes on, on love and companionship and fellowship, and this same family did exactly what the family in the world would have done to us. Yeah. 
And it's the, the reasoning behind it was the most disturbing because I've maintained the same stance all the way throughout. I haven't changed my words at all in the fact that all I've said is I would like us to sit down and study the map. Amen. That's, that's all I've said. Um, in the beginning, I, I've never even called the Trinity doctrine uh, the doctrine of devils or mm -hmm. anything as such as the pastor equated to our doctrine. Yeah. Um, I've never, you know, outwardly spoken against what the church believes. I was just more looking for a period of sitting down and reconciling beliefs. Mm -hmm. If, you know, the Trinity doctrine held up to the word of God and the spirit of prophecy, then well. If what I was finding was completely off, then well. Mm -hmm. I wasn't opposed to setting aside what was error so that Christ would be lifted up, Amen. you know, and that was my position the entire time. And, you know, me, as uh, Dustin said, me and the pastor, we have a, a stronger relationship than any other in the congregation. Uh, okay. We, my wife and I, before we were married, we came out of the world. And when we left the world to follow Christ, we lost everything. We lost house, home, you know, car, clothes, even the dogs. And it was our pastor who was there that opened his home to us. And I was much grateful for that. I still am, Amen. you know, which was why I felt like going to him would be the best option for me because there was that, that connection. Yeah. And just like you said, you know, when I, I think about how that happened, the only feeling that I have is man, that, that kind, that's kind of what betrayal feels like, yeah. you know, when, you know, someone you have put your trust in or even the organization, not, not just the individual, the organization, the church, because it wasn't just pastor who uh, opposed uh, the study. It was many of the people in the church mm -hmm. who I then turned around and asked the question, what have you done? You know, Look at look at our my past in the church and tell me what have I done to offend anyone in this church? Mm -hmm. You know, what have I preached out of accordance with the word of God at any time? If there is something, let me know, please. Amen. That's what I'm saying. You know, and it was it was very, very heartbreaking, to say the least. Yeah. Well, now <clears throat> I've been told by some, this was not my experience, but I've been told by some that when they have been um, dis, I, some people call it dismembered when they're be, when they've been dismembered from the church for them it was like a divorce it was you were part of a family you had grown up together you had loved these people they had been your neighbors you know that you you fought for the rights of the children in the schools you 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 know raised money together for the projects and the pie you know the what do you call them the uh Oh, just all these various things that you do in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. But when you when they left, it felt like a divorce. Was that your situation too? Did it feel like that, or I mean, like maybe I can speak to Vanessa. Um, you said your father is a pastor. Maybe you haven't been challenged by the church like um, Brother Anthony has, but you're seeing it happen. What is this like? Okay, for me it's a little different. Um... We have, I have moved a lot, so I've not had like um, years in one church. Okay. And we also visited a lot of different churches. So it's not like we had a home church, but half the time we're gone traveling to other churches and then um, coming to the States, we moved a lot with the military. So we didn't have like one church for years. And so um, besides that, I've I loved reading Ellen White, and since I was like 14, 15, I always understood it as there's the Adventist message and there's the Adventist organization. And I've seen things over the years and read things that are not according to the Bible or to Ellen White. So I have not been surprised. So this was like, oh, you know, <laughs> like okay. that's not a surprise. Why am, I, why am I surprised? So I've seen all these like the changes from the the um um the 
well, what's it called? The, the three, the logo, the, the logo, and yep. things happening in different um, schools, and just the change overall in the organization. So, I have. It was not a surprise in that way. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, okay, so that's what it is. <laughs> that's what this is all about. I was just never knew what what is it. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew there was something going on that I I knew there was something else going on. So I know that the message is the truth, but there's it's different to the organization. So for me, there was always a difference. Okay. And I was I always tried to talk to my parents about it, but they were like, no, it says Adelaide says like the church is not going to fall. It seems like it, but it's, the church is not going to fall. So I'm like, and the, the, the true church, and I'm like, well, but I, I think there's a difference between, because it doesn't match up with what's happening. So I always kind of had that in my back of my mind. So when this happened, and we said the Bible, and we see online the Bible, and I was like, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> so so, so it was a little different, yeah. Okay, you're saying in your experience that when you studied the Bible and you understood the truth about the Father and His Son, and then you looked at Ellen White's writings, they coincided, right? Okay, there's there's no like break and there's no separation and there's not we don't have to push Ellen White aside because she's a false teacher. No. Okay, yeah, that's what I've gathered not too. Absolutely. Now, so have you been able to speak with your father about this at all, Vanessa, or has that so, not come yet? <laughs> so. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I'm really settled in truth and be able to talk and know and have time to really study. Um, the second issue is that, of course, time difference. We have a long, a big time difference and bad internet. And I was, I'm praying that they are able to visit. So because in person, hanging, talking, and then hanging up and let and not being able, you know, that's. Um, it's very difficult, you know, yeah. and then, then the next thing, something happens, you don't have time to talk, and all these things. So was, I'm really praying the battle, hoping that, and hoping that they're able to visit. And then you have the time to really sit down, because person to person is just so much different than over about bad internet connection that, that, you know, that stops every couple minutes, and <laughs> kids, and I was like, oh, oh, I really want to be able to just, you know, sit and talk, and see people face to face, and being able to see, the, you know, have that personal connection. Okay, good for you. So Dustin, you have seen this experience that, uh, I mean, you, I think you said a little bit about it, but what has been your overall understanding of the situation? Is there anything more you want to share? Yeah, um, it's actually evolved quite, quite rapidly. And I think our, our attitude towards our local church, the church organization, um, and each other have, have changed tremendously. Mm. When we were going through the experience with the church board and the church business meeting, we were uh, we were pretty devastated. It was very difficult. Um, I know we, we've, we've all cried about it, prayed yeah. about it, you know, just because there was a, some, a point where I wasn't 100% sure. And I'm like, God, I pray every day. Like, God, if this is not the right message, please show us that we're wrong. Like, the last thing I want to do is to tear apart a church. Amen. For for no reason, like that's absolute last thing. So, and we, I was really, really hurt about the, about the whole thing. But as soon as pastor sent us an email and tell us, told us we wouldn't be allowed in the building, and then the locks were changed and all that, like I felt this sense of freedom. Wow. Right, like a million pounds were just lifted off my shoulders, huh. and now. We started talking and like, wow, we're freed up to actually go do God's work for real, mm -hmm. right? Not stuck in some building, regurgitating the same sermons we've heard a million times. Mm -hmm. Now we can go out into the community, minister to the people's needs, create relationships, Amen. and bring people to Jesus, Amen. right? Just like, just like he shows us in the gospel. And I, now I'm recalling that you told me about how during the Sabbath hours you guys were able to go out and do outreach during the, the times where you would have been in a church service, right? Is that what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Anthony, um, he's kind of laid the groundwork by doing some community service uh, at our local homeless shelter. Um, and it was his idea to go out to one of the parks, the parks where a lot of the, the homeless and needy people hang out mm -hmm. and just feed the people on the Sabbath. And then uh, that's what we've been doing and making a lot of great uh, friendships. And um, we can see there's, there's an impact 
um, in us and our children. Absolutely. Um, and obviously an impact for the people at the, at the park, most importantly. Hallelujah. We can, we can definitely see changes in all of us, and it's, it's been an amazing blessing. Oh, that's great. Good news. So now, are you guys planning on starting a fellowship where you're at, where others are invited to come and you can meet at a home or something? Or what's what's? Do you have any plans like that? Absolutely. Um, we've been we've been doing pretty much just that. Um, we've been going from home to home, switching between uh, Dustin's house and uh, another family's house, and we've been after we do our uh, service in the community, we come sit down, have a meal together, and study together open up the word of God, see, you know, if there's any more light to be gleaned in this time. We, we live in very critical times and we all want to make sure that we are connected to, to Christ and, and that we're, we're always pursuing the light. We're always following Christ through the sanctuary until this is over. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, that's really encouraging. Praise God that you guys have been able to come together and, you know, find, I think, some absolute truth about the Father having a Son and the Spirit of God being sent forth. Um, I, I just wonder, do you have any more thoughts that you'd like to share to close this up, or perhaps maybe in the future you can give us an update of what's going on? Yeah, I mean, we, we'd love to, to keep you updated on how God is working in all of our lives. Uh, we, we felt impressed to, you know, not not just have our own family within, you know, the, the people who we communicate on a daily basis, but actually grow and, you know, have a ministry to where we can, you know, go out into the community, as Dustin said, and make these connections and these relationships and to bring others into the, the fold, Amen. you know, to, to go out there and preach the gospel, not to, you know, the choir anymore, but to those who are truly out there seeking Christ. Amen. Those who are truly out there, you know, lost and, and feel hopeless. The the Bible tells us that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Yes. So what we want to do is we want to make ourselves available as laborers. Amen. And, you know, it, it's, there, it's starting to become very ripe for that kind of situation. The reason why I'm saying this, like just today, my sister sent me a video of a very punk rock, heavy metal type looking guy. He had tattoos on him and stuff. And he was in tears, and he didn't even speak for the first one minute and 18 seconds of the live video. He just sat there and stared at the, the video camera because he was so upset. He started talking about children molestation and or organ harvesting and the various things that are just rampant around the world and how, you know, kids are being sold for sexual slaves, as sexual slaves, etc. Now, you can talk about that all day long, and that's wrong. These people that you wouldn't normally think to speak out against evils are speaking out against evils. You've got doctors that are like the, you know, the doctors, one of the frontline doctors of America. They're coming together. I don't imagine all of them are dedicated Christians, but they're coming together because they're seeing falsehoods and they're starting to speak out. And there are others that are saying, this COVID thing is crazy. It's a power grab. This, it has nothing to do with the sickness of people because 99% of everybody that's getting this is going gonna, is gonna to overcome. But these people are not Bible students, but they're speaking out against evils. And we're seeing this all over the world. And now it's time to start speaking to people that are starting to see what's truth and what's error. And they're speaking out against what's error. So I feel like God is raising up people around the world like Anthony, like Vanessa, like Dustin, to be able to speak to these people in such clear tones that it's impossible to logically lay aside that's not true. No, that is true. You know, there's truth out there and we're looking for it. So thank you guys for coming together and being able to meet like this. And listen, keep praying for your pastor. We're going to be praying for your pastor. We're going to be praying for more pastors. Keep praying for the pastors, praying for the leadership, praying for those that have responsibility and voices. But more than that, pray for those who are members. Because I'm telling you, if you look at the Bible in the, in the New Testament, it wasn't the leadership coming together to proclaim the truth about Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Not at the first. It was the members. It was those that were just general people that saw the light, they loved it, and they proclaimed it. So definitely that's, our, that's who we're fishing for today, right? Is those people that will listen. I've actually got a little bit of an, up, an update. Um, we just haven't been able to get to um, in our conversation yet. Okay. Um, but we did pray for the pastor. We 
Hey Fringe specifically because we felt like he was almost the key to unlock people's minds to studying their Bible in the church. A lot of people were just trusting their pastor of what he was telling them. So we, we started praying for him. And then um, a week and a half ago or so, he reached out and said, hey, I've been impressed to sit down and have a Bible study with you. Oh, good. Um, he, didn't, he didn't reach out with Anthony because I think it's just it's a little too personal for them since they are like family. Okay. So he, he came over, had dinner, um, and it was very friendly. Um, he had apologized. We all kind of apologized. And then he just sat down and he listened for like an hour and a half. Wow, this is good news. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. and you can see some things starting to move. Like you could just, you know, you feel you can see something sink oh, yeah. in, in a person's eyes, you know. And and he left there and was very friendly. And we heard through the grapevine that he was studying on a topic very, very diligently and very closely. Okay. We're hoping this is it. We haven't had any contact with him since, but we're hopeful. I keep praying for him every day, um, and you know, hopefully he's. He's able to, to accept the, the biblical truth, and um, so yeah, it's it's a, a big step uh, in the right direction. There's some hope there. Well, that's wonderful. You know, I'm I praise God that you've had that opportunity. Not everybody gets that opportunity, but I will say this: um, do continue praying for him because I know there are a lot of pastors that have been studying this and they have not come out publicly because many of them know that they will not have a job. And so, you know, definitely just continue to encourage that person. And also, if he ever wanted to speak with another pastor that's been, you know, many, many years, 15 something plus 16 years in the Seventh-day Adventist Church as a minister, then please give him my contact information. I've offered that to hundreds of people, and I have spoken with very few of those pastors. So, you know, I I can't imagine that he'll be too excited to speak with me because I am a heretic in their eyes, but... It's at least a, a willing, a willingness on my side to speak with him, because I feel like um, we could have a good conversation about what the Bible says. So I know you could do the same thing. I'm just saying there's another available person who's willing to speak up. The the fact that you you said that is very interesting because before this even happened, you were one of the people that he mentioned as falling away from the church that he really liked. So, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. Be, be, before, before I even got to the, the point of understanding what I was studying, he had had a, a conversation with me in one of our elders meetings and said, man, you see what's happening in the church? This person's falling away and this person and this person. And I really liked Daniel Mason. Oh, wow. You know, so, yeah. Well, good on him. <laughs> We will keep praying for him, man. You know, if I I know I know our pastor, and he wants to he wants to find truth. He Amen. wants to be in in the way of truth. He wants to walk the narrow way. Amen. So I I pray that you know what the enemy has done thus far, as far his delu- as his delusions go upon the people has not taken root in the mind of the pastor that the Lord is able to break him free. Amen. May it be so. Well, yes, that's good news. You know, hey, based on the fact that he's heard of me, not everybody has, but based on the fact that he's heard of me, maybe that's a reason why he should reach out. I will be more than happy to talk with him. And so, uh, and if I'm, tell him if I'm wrong and he straightens me out, I will say publicly that I'm wrong. And I, I promise that I will speak up. So anyways, um, <laughs> I, I do hope that you'll be able to continue having a good conversation with him and, and we'll, we'll all be praying for him now. Well, if there's nothing else to share, maybe we can have a closing prayer asking for God's blessings on everybody that we love and care for. Absolutely, brother. You guys ready? Okay, let's pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, I wanna thank you so much that you've given us this opportunity to meet together. I pray for Anthony, I pray for Dustin, I pray for Vanessa, asking that you would bless them as they continue to study and share. Bless also the Fayetteville Church and the members that are there, also the pastor specifically. It sounds to me like he really seems to want to help people. He wanted to help Anthony and his family. He also wants to study. He's been able to meet with Dustin and interact with him for an hour and a half to listen. 
I ask that you would give him the ability to have those blinders taken from his eyes and the eye salve uh, anointed upon him, that he'd be able to see and that clearly. Give um, him and all the other people, the pastors, the members, the leaders, everybody the unction from your spirit to study the Bible in regard to who you are. For we know that the Bible says, fear God, you, and give glory to you. It doesn't say fear gods and give glory to them. So we pray that you'd help us to be so clear in our minds as to how we can share, but also to be completely founded on the rock, your son, the truth. We thank you so much for this opportunity, praying that these blessings will be far extending until the, the enemy is able to shut down the internet. And we just want this message to go far. Thank you for it, Lord, and we pray your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.